All right. Alicia is now going to talk about vascular surgery coding. Mm, vascular coding. Uh, another shout out to Z Health Publishing. If this is an area that you want to get involved in, I would suggest aligning with them. They have some great education, probably the number one education in cardiology and vascular type coding. The question that came in is, I wanted to try getting into cardiology coding and a friend told me to start with vascular surgery. I'm at a loss as to where to start to prepare for this area of coding. My background so far has only been in risk adjustment. I love it, but I want to do more. You know, we hear that a lot. And risk adjustment is a great way to start your career in coding. You can hear us talk about that on other webinars. But, you know, many of you are visiting on the webinar and said you wanted to get another credential. And cardiology, like we talked about earlier with nuclear medicine stuff, that's kind of stress test, that's a bread and butter, you know. And uh, vascular surgery, let's talk about what that actually is. Let's get our verbiage correct. Uh, it really is the diagnosis and comprehensive uh, management of anything that goes wrong with the arteries, the veins, and the lymphatic system. We don't want to forget the lymphatic system in there. Uh, it, actually, the lymphatic system kind of runs along these major vessels and they kind of bleed into each other. So it's really interesting how that works. Uh, when they say diplomats, where I got this, just replace that with, you know, your physicians in vascular surgery should have a significant experience with all aspects of treating a patient. And it's true, vascular diseases, including diagnoses, the medical treatment, uh, let's see, reconstructive vascular surgery, which I told you in the other uh, uh with nuclear medicine, some of those codes were for uh, reconstruction or revascularization and endovascular techniques. A lot of this is done endoscopically, which meaning we're visualizing it as we go. You know, this is a great definition that tells us a little bit about the background knowledge that you need if you want to get into the vascular uh, surgery arena. This was focused towards helping somebody that is thinking about this as a career in medicine, but it works with the coders as well. You need to have that. And as a risk adjustment coder, you would have the diagnosis under your belt. It's the other stuff that we need to build up your knowledge base on. So uh, now let's talk about some of the other aspects that you need to be aware of for vascular surgery. Let's see here. I added this great little uh, comic. It's kind of small. If you get this print out, you'd probably be able to see it. But it says, uh, you can see the guy and he's got a cord uh, out of his chest. And it says, oh, that's just a bonus feature. You can plug an iPhone into your chest. Uh, your new pacemaker came with that. So <laughs> I couldn't help but share that. And uh, again, uh, because everything you think of it being wired, vascular surgery is going to, to be talking about things like putting in pacemakers and putting in stents and stuff in the heart. Uh, some of the vein treatments that you need to be aware of. So the reason I, I wanted to list these, a lot of people just think vascular means veins only, and it isn't. But I picked these three vein treatments uh, so that you could go and use it as a launching point to do your own research. So we have RFA, which is radio, radio frequency ablation. Uh, then we have EVLT, endovenous laser treatment. And uh, let's see, me mechanical chemical ablation, MOCA. In the medical field, we abbreviate everything. We don't ever. <laughs> <laughs> write any of these things down. So I wanted to also show you how some of that stuff is abbreviated. Use that again as a launching point to look at some of the vein treatments. That is just the tip of the iceberg. Then I found these scenarios that I wanted to give you to also help you think about the different things that you would come across if you were coding for both cardiology or interventional radiology uh, and vascular surgery. So the first scenario is a patient presents to the ER with a cold leg and dusky forefoot. 
previous Fem A key pop uh, with prosthetic now occluded good caliber GSV off to OR meaning you know okay all of this points to that we have some type of a, a blockage going on so the first thing that you'd be uh, involved with is your cardiology uh, provider is going to be doing a consult then they'll you'll be coding for that uh, femoral pop uh, popliteal bypass with the vein then they'll probably do an endarectomy at the side of the bypass and then they'll do an angiogram then they might have to redo the bypass. We have a poor inflow with iliac occlusion, so they got to go put in an iliac stent. And we're not done. As we scroll down, we're going to see more. And again, this was all stuff that a provider had listed that, you know, just from that scenario that they'd probably be doing. Then you'd probably be following up two weeks later with a patient bypass, but had a TIA, which is a, a, a stroke, a, a transient ischemic stroke. Uh, U.S. shows high-grade stenosis, so we've got a clinic visit. Now, a stroke, a TIA doesn't last very long. Uh, it's like a little baby stroke. So then they got a CEA. Then you uh, follow up a month later with the patient bypass, but gangrenous toe, one toes, one through five. So again, that forefoot was losing circulation and it's gotten so bad now that we have gangrene set in. So you've got a clinic visit, you've got a TMA, and then two months from the original presentation, patient complains of pain in calf with ambulation. So we've got a duplex, reveals a drop in ABI, but stint poorly visualized. Angiogram then is going to be done, and they're going to show high-grade stenosis at distal anastomosis. So this was all work that's been progressively being done to save this fella's leg, right? And then um, the decisions made to intervene and treat with angioplasty. Then they throw out a couple codes. Angiogram of the aorta, uh, then move catheter to look at the LLE, and then an angiogram of the aorta, pelvis, and LLE without moving to the catheter. And I hate it when they use W O for without because it's really supposed to be a slash S. Anyway, and um, that again, just an overview of all of the things that you're going to be coming across with vascular surgery, uh, interventional radiology, and cardiology, all of these terms. So if this seems foreign to you uh, or exciting because you want to learn more, which I hope it's that, then it'll be a launching point for you to go and say, okay, I need to go look how angioplasties are done. What's the difference between an angioplasty and angiogram? Uh, what is an LLE? Uh, what is a TIA? What does it mean uh, to describe somebody that's getting poor circulation to the extremities? You know, what's the signs and symptoms, uh, the common tests that are done? And, and uh, again, I wanted to just kind of give this person an overview uh, so that they could uh, – say, okay, now I know what I need to do to get into vascular surgery. And next thing you know, you'll be taking that CIRR, uh, the CIRC, the CIRCC, Interva Interventional Radiology uh, Credential. Do you need more medical certification and business training? Learn more at www.cco.us.